So it's been about a year that I attended a DNRS seminar in Texas, and I wanted to give an update on how it's changed my life. And I'd say my chemical sensitivities are about 80% less, maybe a little bit higher. And that's solely just to DNRS and the techniques that I learned from there. And then the other 10, 20% is from controlling my inflammation levels and my oxidative stress levels and making sure I keep like healthy habits and lifestyle exercise, good sleep, eating right, all that kind of stuff. And uh, wow, it's really raining out today. Anyway, um, but I want to talk about why DNRS worked for me and what else you can do to improve upon this as well. I mean, the whole point of the DNRS is to put yourself in an altered state so you can change the way how you react to a certain stimulus um, or stimuli if you uh, had multiple problems. For me, my problem is chemical sensitivities uh, mainly um, that I use to address DNRS to address uh, from detergents and smells i mean i sp i spilled essential oils on my hands and ever since i did that uh they were undiluted and they have like a p like really potent um immunostimulant property to them on top of having a very strong smell and i would get a reaction of body buzzing every time i would be around anything detergent shampoos perfumes i mean all the good stuff <laughs> like colognes i mean i used to wear cologne uh Axe, body spray, whatever it is, any kind of smell, candles, I would just get awful sensations um, from them. And I mean, the past year I've been able to, I, I've been making documentaries uh, and traveling all over the world. And I've been on planes where people are wearing perfume. Why the hell do people wear perfume on planes? But I've been able to tolerate that. I've been able to. Uh, be on set, people are wearing perfume or whatever it is, or, or sprays. I mean, I can handle it. And what really changed my mindset was, I would say right after I, I did the, the live seminar, um, I smelled someone's perfume, or I smelled someone's shampoo. It was this girl's shampoo, and it actually smelled good. I think it was Dove. And it was like, whoa, <laughs> my sense of smell just changed completely. And so, the point of DNRS is we're making these neuroplastic changes to create a better outcome when you smell something. I mean, our bodies are so primed to react to stimuli or behave in a certain way that we do things unconsciously. For example, like I used to play baseball when I was younger and if a ball is thrown at me, I just automatically like left arm goes up, catch it in my left hand, not even really thinking about it. Or if I'm writing, I could write, I could write blindfold if I had to, or I could type on the keyboard blindfold if I had to. I could type on the keyboard and talk at the same time, or watch a seminar, or watch, be like at a course, type at the same time, and not even like look at the keys, because it's just primed into my nervous system to react that way, to be able to work that way. Um, Another example of this is like driving a car, or riding a bike, or whatever. I mean, some people can, you shouldn't do this, but some people can text and drive a car and, and slash or be on a phone call or listen to music all at the same time subconsciously while they're thinking about something completely different. It, it's miraculous what you can prime the body to do and act. And so my point from there is we want in a program like this to create neuroplastic changes that essentially change the way that you've originally adapted. So if you've adapted to handle chemicals by getting brain fog and avoiding it, uh, avoiding chemicals, then every time you come around a chemical, your body's gonna do that, whether it's toxic or not. I mean, chemicals are toxic. Uh, they're xenobiotics. We don't want those in our body, but you know, they're, they're, they're everywhere. You, you can't get around it unless you want to live out in the middle of nowhere, or you can just make yourself more resilient to the world. Um, 
And with DNRS, it's a great place for someone who hasn't, hasn't, doesn't know where to start. I mean, you can do anything that creates new patterns and new um, ways for you to adapt. I mean, you could even take, this is hypothetical, you could take something like 7-8-DHF, and I don't recommend this, we're just talking in a, in a hypothetical situation. 7-8-DHF is a flavone that can produce BDNF through a TRKB pathway and create new neuronal connections. Same thing with like psilocybin or, or like medicinal mushrooms, not medicinal mushrooms, magic mushrooms. Uh, I guess medicinal mushrooms in the lion's mane also have those abilities. But you create you create these new neuronal pathways or you prime yourself for the ability to do that. You just have to act upon it. So every time that you see something that, or are put in a, like a stress response, you can overcome that and have it to work on something else. So instead of reacting with body buzzing or brain fog, I can react with a smile and like increased energy, just making my body react to a certain way. And I mean, I mean like still, I, I live a healthy lifestyle. I'm not going to put myself through chemicals, but if I'm traveling in an Airbnb and stuff and they use downy or tide on the sheets, it's not gonna affect my sleep. Um, as long as I keep my DNRS or no plastic ideas, like you can do meditation with major no plastic changes, it's really gotta be self-directed. Um, and keeping my inflammation levels down. And that's through like exercise, proper sleep, all that kind of stuff. My biggest takeaway from this, I'd say, is that I was told to read a book. Um, the it's called Brain Lock, I believe. Uh, and he really goes through how a lot of the patterns we fall into are just our patterns, our subconscious patterns. So a lot of the things we do are because we have just been stuck in that state. And I mean, Annie Hopper says we're, you're stuck in a rut, but I mean, you could be stuck in just the same mind pattern over and over again, um, which NAC is great for that. I mean, I wouldn't do NAC long term, but NAC is great for those patterns. And those patterns are a typical case of something called OCD. I mean, essentially it's an obsessive compulsive disorder, like uh, having to clean every time uh, something's dirty or having to, um, you know, every, every time you are exposed to something, you have to do a certain reaction. That's, that's kind of the OCD mindset. And so you can kind of, if, if this empowers you, you can treat it like OCD. But I guess to get to my point is what I'm trying to say is any kind of neuroplastic change, you've got to make it either a good neuroplastic, something that benefits you or, um, or your same mind body system is going to do something to protect you. And if you can make it something that empowers you, then do that. Don't let your body fall trap, uh, in the trap of falling into a defense mechanism and rather treat it as a stressor that improves you like hormesis. So DNRS is a great place to start if you like have no idea about any of this kind of stuff. Um, if you're a biohacker and all that kind of stuff, then I mean, I would go uh, do like combine the different things. That's what I did. Combine different biohacking techniques with DNRS. Um, or find a really good shaman. <laughs> so thanks guys for watching. I hope this was of value to you and I really hope you can empower yourself. This is These are my two cents on this whole experience and it's just been a year and I'm excited to see where I can go beyond this. So thanks guys and stay beautiful.